Hi, this is Jason from Effective Dashboards, helping maintenance and reliability professionals get the most out of Power BI. So welcome back to another video. In this video, I'll be looking at the funnel chart. So I'll be looking at the funnel chart and helping you understand where it might be applicable to data when it comes to maintenance and reliability applications. Okay, so let's crack on and we can get this um, funnel chart created. So here it is here, the funnel. Now I will say, that the funnel is really designed with conversion of sales in, in mind. Okay, so it's really is not designed, I think, for for the type of data that maintenance and reliability professionals are looking at. Um, but I'm going to show you how to set it up anyway, and I'm going to give you a few pointers on where that might be something that you could use. But with that in mind, it, it is designed to talk about um, the conversion rates through different processes in a sales funnel, essentially. So let's go and add in some information to start with. And this is going to be an example of how not to use it, in my opinion, anyway. So let's add in the group has been um, the, the discipline. So we're looking at data here that's related to Batlog. So we're counting the number of work orders in Batlog for, a different, for each discipline. And let's add in the number of work orders. Batlog count is the value. Okay, so we can make it slightly smaller and we can see here that this is the, the, the sort of standard default options that are, are presented whenever you go into the, the when you first set this up. So along the top here, we've got this 100% um, bar here. Now that is basically representing 100% of the, fir the first value here, the highest value, which happens to be mechanical, is taken as the 100% value. And um, that's important because when we start to add data labels here, we can choose those as a percentage of this total or a percentage of the previous one. And that, again, is relevant for sales situations where you might want to say, OK, well, a thousand people visit my website and um, maybe 500 of those or, or 700 of those clicked on the, the page that had a, an, an offer to download a free audio book or a free ebook. And then you want to see how many of those actually went on to sign up to your newsletter and how many of those then went on to buy something, that type of idea. So that's what it's really designed for. Not this example here. Now, if you see it getting used for this example here, what is essentially being is happening here is that we're using this as a kind of a cooler, a, a trendy version of one of these very basic stack bar charts. Now the, the beauty of the stat bar chart is we've got a common left hand line here to draw the eye to and then we can compare the values across from left to right. Whereas if we're using it in this application here, the values are, it's difficult to start to compare these values with each other because they're basically centered rather than being aligned to the left hand side. So I would suggest if you're using it for this example here, we've got a list of categories, each one is not related to the other. And um, and you, you but you do want to see them in this horizontal aspect because it's a bit easier to read than um, than for example say one of these. Then use the stacked bar chart. Okay. So that said, let's have a look at some of the options for configuring this. Just so you know, um, let's go in here. Under general, there's nothing nothing out the ordinary there. Category, you know, you can switch that on or off. Now it doesn't have an option to put a legend on, so that's going to be um, probably required to leave this on if you're using it. Data colors, there's a bit of conditional formatting on the data colors which could be useful. If um, if you want to basically link these to a number then you can and you can have these conditionally formatted. Now if you are interested in learning more about conditional formatting then check out the course below in the link below where I've got a whole course dedicated to conditional formatting so I'm not going to go into it in, in too much detail here but that's available, that resource is available below and highly recommend it because conditional formatting can totally transform your dashboards. Uh, data labels, now this is where we've got a number of different options here. So we can see just now we've just got the data value, which is the, the number of work orders at each one of these, um, against each one of these categories here. But you can actually set it up and it can be set up as a percentage of the first. So this is basically telling us, if this is 100%, this first one, and this is why we've got this 100% value here, this represents 99.221% of this value. 
Um, and then we can see this value here, operations represents 8.3% of this mechanical value here. So it doesn't mean anything with this data, but I'm going to go and look at an example in a second where it does actually mean something. Um, and then we've got percentage of the previous, so that just looks at the previous value. And what was this as a percentage of that previous one? Um, and then we've got, you can have both as well. So percentage of the first and value, percentage of the previous and value. Uh, conversion, so this really just puts these bars on and off. So if you do like this and you think, oh, actually, I still want to see this value here because I think it's, it's different and it's new and it might just draw somebody's attention to it, then I would definitely suggest that you put these conversion bars off because these don't actually tell you anything. They don't, they don't relate to anything that's, that's meaningful in this example here. Okay, so the rest of the stuff is just the title, the background, and all the usual things that come with all of the visualizations. So let's look at an example where it might be useful. So in this example here, if I just go and look at the data, we've got, well, actually, the data is fairly straightforward. We've, we've got a warning, we've got an alarm, we've got a minor process trip, we've got a major process trip, and we've got a full plant shutdown. So we want to analyze how many warnings eventually progress through to become full plant shutdowns. Okay, that's what we're looking at here. So it's almost like a, a reverse conversion. And um, like I mentioned before, you're looking to convert as much leads as possible into sales in that um, in that type of industry. And um, in here, we were looking at trying to reduce the amount of warnings that actually progress through each of these different stages to a full plant shutdown, which we want to avoid at all costs. So let's look at how this is set up. So all I've done here is I've got the parameter deviation has been the grouping, and then I have got the number of events. So if we look at the data, we can see that each one of these parameter deviations is a warning, an alarm, a minor process, a major process, a full plant shutdown, and we've got a number related to each one of them. So that could be data that could be calculated each day, looking back over the month or over the, a year, and it just helps you to understand, okay, how many, if we start addressing these warnings and stop the parameter deviations of our plant, so this could be a temperature, it could be a pressure, it could be anything related to how the plant's operated. So if we stop these deviations, then it should potentially, and we want to validate this with this data, it should stop minor and major and, and full plant shutdowns. So if we go in here under the categories, we've just, um, yeah, we've just left that. The only thing that I've actually changed really is this label section here where we've got the value. So this is 100%. And then we've got, of those, 35% ended up becoming alarms. And of those, 33%, and this is where we've got percentage of the first. Okay, we're not interested in percentage of the previous year, we're looking at percentage of the first, because we're interested in seeing how much of these warnings became alarms, became minor process trips, between major process trips, and then became plant process shutdowns. So, yeah, you can see it getting smaller and 0.34% of, which is 15 of our full plant shutdowns started off as minor warnings. Okay, so if we'd addressed those at that stage, then we could have actually, um, we could have actually stopped them becoming full process plant shutdowns. So that is an example where it might be useful to use the funnel to display information related to these process deviations or process parameter deviations. Right, so thanks for listening. If you like this video, then it's um, always helpful if you could give it a thumbs up. And if you want to keep up to date with the latest videos, then feel free to press the subscribe button and the bell and you get a notification each time I release a video, which is about every week. So thanks for listening and I will talk to you in the next video.